Greetings and welcome to this all new Trap Gold Tower session in After Effects. And uh, today we're gonna create this kind of thing together. Uh, basically, it's just a fractal on a plane in uh, Trap Gold Tower. And uh, I'm gonna look at a couple of ways to uh, create uh, procedural textures to uh, apply on that, and also uh, how to use a smart image based lighting to uh, give it a little uh, plasticky feel and uh, how to uh, make it animate like that in loop so uh, let's go in After Effects and let's start right away by creating a new solid and uh, I'm gonna call this one Tau and let's save this already uh, Fractal Plane Tutorial 1 and I'm gonna create a new solid 1080 by 1080. Let's call this Tau. And uh, oh, that's a very uh, huge amount of time. We don't need no more than, uh, I don't know, also 1080 frames. So uh, let's cut that down to this duration. And uh, let's start playing with our tools. So we're gonna start off by applying Tau here onto our solid. And by default, we're gonna get our automatically generated path we're just gonna remove that because we're not gonna use it in this tutorial and uh, I'm gonna hit control shift alt L to <laughs> create a new spotlight make sure that this is set to spot and we're gonna call it Tau all caps and uh, uh, we're gonna just make sure in, in this case that the radius and fall off distance is set to 100 other values doesn't really matter let's click OK also we can make sure that uh, it's color is white if we don't have uh, if we don't want to influence anything with the, the color yet um, next we're gonna hit control shift alt Y just uh, simply to create a new solid so new uh, not, not a new solid but a new null so uh, control shift alt Y and uh, that new null is uh, by default we're gonna make it 3d by clicking here and uh, by default it's at the center the very center of our composition so we're gonna grab uh, the position data, control C to copy. I'm gonna simply paste that onto our Tau light to make sure that it's uh, um, right at the center. Next, we can color code. We can color code those. Uh, let's make them orange to uh, keep them as group. And uh, let's call this settings. And we're gonna attach this to that. Cool. Uh, another thing that we can do right away is uh, right click on this and uh, make sure that it's auto orient is set to off and also we can hard code something so let's go in our light name here and we're gonna type down SID004 um, and that'll make us a square instead of a triangle to work with and uh, right off the bat what we can do is uncheck this chamfer here if we want to lose kind of a little bevel here that we have and uh, now we have a perfect square so let's uh, keyframe it so we have some kind of a floor to work with basically so um, we're gonna go to our light object and we're gonna hit P to reveal the, po the position property we're gonna create a keyframe at the first frame so at frame 0 we're gonna create one and then we're gonna go up to the frame 300 and we're gonna create another one 300 because that's the default duration for paths uh, created by Tao lights here it's 10 seconds if you want to use a different uh, base of duration for that you can change it here but make sure that uh, you understand that this is the duration Tao is using to uh, create its uh, geometry so we're gonna put a marker here so we can rem remember that and uh, here at frame uh, zero we want to make some kind of a floor so we're gonna pull it towards us on the Z so we we'll get over here we're right at the center now so minus uh, 1500 and uh, let's select both our keyframes keyframe assistant time reverse now this keyframe that was the last one has become the first one so we're gonna push it the other way so this is minus 150 this one is gonna be 
1,500 uh, in the positives. So now we're looking from inside. We're going to simply create a new camera. And uh, let's create a new null. I'm going to call it Dolly. This is going to be uh, what we're going to attach our camera to. And then we can simply rotate around, so 90 degrees, minus 90 degrees. We're going to kind of look at it from the top here. So here's what we have to start. Uh, next, we want to make sure that in our Tau properties here, in the paths from Tau lights, that size from radius is uh, checked here. And also, we want to make sure that fractal amp from fall of distance is checked, because that's something that we're going to use in uh, this tutorial. So let's, uh, let's stretch this out. So basically, what we want to do in the segment section here, uh, see we're keeping our amount of sides here at 3. Everything is default value here, because we're hard, hard coding it here. If we would uh, change this to any number, this would stay four sides. So that's pretty neat. And uh, basically, what we want to do is we want to stretch it size on the x like that. But if possible, we want to keep this value at some uh, default settings. So uh, one one thing that we can do is uh, open up by hitting S on the keyboard the scale properties for uh, the null on which our tau light is attached to and we can uncheck the uh, proportional scaling and now this is some kind of weird I know but as we decrease this value here um, let me just make sure that we can understand here so as we increase it it's, get, it's getting thinner see our null is getting wider but our shape is getting thinner and as we decrease it our null is getting thinner but our shape is getting wider so that's basically what we want to do if I set this at 13 it's gonna cover up our whole area here so let's uh, rotate around we're, we're looking at it from the top view so this is come some quick way to make ourselves some kind of a floor uh, surface and uh, one thing that I realize here that perhaps we don't necessarily need uh, them to go all the way up to 100 and Five, uh, 1,500. So let's try to uh, decrease this value here, right until we uh, get. Whoops. Right until we get some uh, gaps. So let's try 600 minus 600, positive 600 here. We're still okay. Let's try 300. Ah, now we're getting uh, so. It's going to be something around uh, 600. Let's start with that. So 600 here and uh, minus 600 here. So we have the same uh, distance. If we look at that now, we have something. It's uh, still like a bit rectangular. Work, work it if you want to get it uh, really uh, square. But I don't think that's going to be necessary for the moment. And uh, also what we want to do is uh, make sure that it's really thin. So if we increase that value here, we can make it thinner. But uh, I think that we can keep this at 100. And what we can do is just cancel uh, to make it really flat. We're going to kind of set that at 0. So it's going to make us uh, a flat, flat plane to uh, distort with our fractal. So if we're looking at right at it from the side, we can't see anything because it's so thin. So let's look at it from the top view. So this is our dolly. It's rotated 90 degrees. So we're looking at it from the top. If I pull back with the camera, we're like flying on top of it and looking down, right? So um, next, we're going to... Uh, should we apply some texture on that first? Yes, we're going we're gonna to create a texture to apply on to our plane. So let's create a new solid. We're going to call it text. And uh, right away, I'm going to hit Control Shift C on this. And I'm going to leave all attributes in Tau here. So we have uh, something to work with here. Double click to get inside. And uh, let's see one quick way to create some strokes here. We're going to make a ramp. And uh, that's kind of a way. I like to use to color things 
because it's simple to change afterwards. Uh, I'm going to add uh, the color rama effect on this. So that's pretty straightforward. By default, we're getting that kind of a pattern, color pattern. We can uncheck that to uh, uh, have no interpolation in between our colors. And uh, let's choose our own. So we're going to make it fairly simple. Let's make this one entirely black or maybe not entirely but uh, close to and uh, let's make uh, this one uh, kind of a nice uh, vivid orange and uh, let's make uh, this one uh, white close to white and uh, this one maybe some kind of gray and you can put any color that you want here another one that's all really white and another one that's kind of a shade of blue to fit with the orange I don't know that this is very pretty or anything but uh, it's gonna help us we can increase the cycle repetitions here if we want to get smaller uh, smaller uh, strokes and uh, like if we want to create uneven strokes we can add more color here I'm gonna just click OK so I'm gonna keep the same and if we do that like we can uneven things out so perhaps uh, it's gonna make it a little more, a bit more interesting if it's uneven but let's keep this one here at the center because it's like this color is what's happening uh, on the bottom and on top if it's always the same here it's gonna be seamless so uh, it's gonna be to our advantage you'll see so let's start with that. It's an entirely arbitrary pattern of color. You can use your own. We don't need it to be visible in here. We can turn it off. And uh, let's get on our Tau solid here. And uh, we're going to go to textures. And the color texture, we're going to select our our texture here. So what we're going to have by default is uh, some uh, our nice texture applied on our plane here. And uh, if we want to rotate that around, well, we'll we'll need to go in there, and uh, since uh, there's no real quick way to rotate this, I'm gonna simply hit the uh, Control Alt Y to create a new adjustment layer on top of that, and I'm gonna fetch my little transform effect here. It's gonna help us uh, simply to rotate this 90 degrees. So 90 degrees, I'm gonna have them straight up. So let's uh, control alt front slash just to refresh and now we have it uh, across this side. So first uh, thing that we've done here and uh, if we want to look at what type of geometry we have, let's set our shader to smooth. I think that's what we're going to be wanting. And uh, let's open up the second pass here for the wireframe. So that's what we get in terms of geometry same as uh, uh, if you want to look in Cinema 4D uh, the Goro shading like your uh, what kind of geometry we're dealing with here so um, if we want more details here we can increase the amount of segments so 50 will make it more detailed and also the same for the sides so I'm gonna hard code it here and uh, here that's uh, the type of geometry we have here we're on a plane so remember if uh, we rotate around that that's kind of what we have here so um, I think that's gonna work fine for us it's tessellating as triangles right now so if we wanted to have quads we can just set that it's gonna make this type of a grid and uh, you can alternate between uh, one and the other uh, later on the process to see what suits best but for the moment let's uh, start by deforming that so let's get to uh, our fractal displacement and uh, if we increase the amplitude we're we're gonna get some uh, some distortion here pretty cool and we also have uh, some different fractal types here smooth ridge is gonna make it more extreme so now we can reduce this down and uh, the frequency is gonna make it uh, smaller and uh, now that we're distorting it see we don't have uh, enough like it's not getting 
all the way up to the edge down here. So one thing that we can quickly do to resolve that here is uh, instead of 600, let's make this 700. So we're going to add one a little bit more uh, room to work with. Or maybe we can use 800 just to make sure we have enough room here. And uh, always keeping the same just to make sure that uh, in the middle, like, it's uh, equidistant. And uh, let's let's create, like I did in my uh, example, let's create some kind of a valley in the middle. Since we've checked the fractal m from falloff distance, we can use the falloff distance uh, property here on our light to determine uh, how the amplitude of our fractal will be influencing our plane here. So let me demonstrate this. Uh, let's create a keyframe. Now I, uh, I'm going to go at frame 150. This I'm going to bring at 0. And uh, I'm going to create another one by clicking here. And this I'm going to bring at 300 at the end of our geometry creation. So in the middle, I'm going to bring this down to a very small amount, like 5. And I'm going to hit Control alt front slash to refresh. So now we have some kind of a valley right in the middle when our light is uh, around this position as it goes from up to down here it's telling uh, in, uh, our tau effect that we don't want the amplitude of the fractal to be as intense on around this area here so we can also control that by easing the keyframes here so i'm just going to use um, the menus here because if i hit f9 or control f9 is going to quit my recording uh, let's easy ease out the first one here and let's uh, keyframe assistance easy ease in the last one and the one in the middle we're gonna control click on it so our uh, keyframe is gonna become a circle like that and uh, let's uh, bring it these closer so if we want to keep uh, the amplitude uh, for a, a longer uh, duration let's bring those around here and let's bring those this around approximately the same distance as this one so around there so that's gonna narrow our valley here and uh, so this is kind of our valley shape all right we have our let's look at them one at a time our speed graph is that this is our value graph so it's gonna be real strong at 100 and at zero it's gonna be it's gonna be a small amplitude so Let's hit Control Alt Front Slash, and uh, let's also increase our fractal strength a little bit so we can see more what's happening. So we we have a nice little valley in the middle, right here. That's kind of cool. So we can increase the amount of segments if we want to uh, get smoother result, and. Uh, also, I'm going to not hard code the uh, sides so I can really change them here. It's going to make it a little, little bit easier for us. So let's find some values that, uh, that seem to work fine for us. And uh, the, uh, the wireframe pass was just to give us an idea, but now I think that we can turn it off and uh, also on the texture filter we can set that to linear if we want to uh, make it appear a little bit smoother here uh, compared to nearest here and we still need uh, some kind of smoothing here so I think that we can increase that depending on how smooth we want everything to look but I'm not sure if that's something that we want to mess around with there's a couple of things that we can mess around with in fact the complexity the scale let's make it let's make it smaller and let's decrease the frequency so depending on uh, what we want want to get here and uh, one other thing that's uh, really gives us uh, more control on our 
fractal here is the individual amplitude and frequencies. So let's find out what's the one we really want to move uh, around. So this, oh, this increase the height of uh, our heels here. And this, well, it's just affecting on the side. So I don't think that's this one. We want it to be that strong. And the Z, well, it's kind of our Y since we're rotated 90 degrees, we're top down. So we also don't need this one to be that uh, real high. In fact, we just need the amplitude to be strong. And also this one can be more frequent. So as we mess around with those values, we can kind of get uh, some fractal uh, base distortion on our plane here and uh, making sure that we got uneven values here is uh, probably what's going to help us make it uh, with the type of look that we want with that so let's increase that much more so this is going to increase the height of our little heels here and, uh, and just mess around with that until you find something that you think look, looks neat um, the evolution here is one of the ways that you can use to randomize this so if we pull that further here in the values it's going to give us different results different from uh, the default at zero value you can also make it less or more uh, complex and uh, we might want to make sure also that we have at the end we might want to do that but really like increase the amount of sides the amount of uh, segments not that that worried about that if we have it as low as 200 because we're uh, smooth here like if we were setting it to flat we would need actually to get this amount high enough to uh, have it smooth and even then it wouldn't be that smooth polygonal so we want to make sure that this is kept to uh, smooth and uh, also that we have just enough geometry but mainly the sides so that's that's not bad I think that this feels okay all right so uh, that's one thing that we got right uh, let's look at how we can loop first uh, uh, this thing here. So let's get back to our uh, colorama effect here and let's open up the input phase. So the phase shift here uh, is kind of a dial here. If we rotate it once, uh, it'll loop. So we can create a keyframe here at frame zero and uh, let's say we want our loop to be uh, uh, 100 frames long in this case. Let's try with that first. So let's put this. Uh, value at 1 here and uh, let's get back to frame 99 because that's going to be our last frame and this should be looping <coughs> and uh, of course this is going fast right now and since we're duplicating it our pattern five times we don't really need it to be going uh, we just need to have a fifth of uh, a full revolution so in fact we can do that like 360 divided by 5 and uh, only if we phase shift 72 degrees now it should be all right it should loop so that's uh, something that you can consider helpful and uh, you might want to use different uh, uh, different ways to uh, to do that sometimes it's uh, tilts around it's not the nicest way to uh, animate that, but it's the quickest. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's get back on here. And now, if I play this back, it's gonna, our texture is gonna creep 
along our uh, path here and uh, at frame 99 if I end this so I'm gonna add a keyframe here shift 3 I'm gonna hit home to get back at frame 0 and uh, this frame should be the same as this frame but the frame 99 is our last one so this uh, well I'm gonna just make sure the cache is totally uh, empty then start this over again so if we play this normally it should loop fine but perhaps that's not the only thing that we want to animate we want to animate uh, our actual fractal that's distorting everything so let's do that we have a couple of things here so let's see offset Z is gonna move like that offset Y is gonna really change our heels and offset X is gonna move on the side so a couple of things that we can do if we move this it's gonna move up and down if we move this it's gonna move our thing to the side and we can make it loop which is cool so only in 100 frames we're not we're gonna have some lateral movement in there but we're not gonna need to move it like the entire distance to get it to loop so that's one thing that's cool I don't know if I, uh, that's totally uh, clear not confusing but let's demonstrate it so I'm gonna create a keyframe at frame 0 on the offset X and uh, let's get to our last keyframe of our animation not the end of geometry creation but uh, the 100 and let's offset X let's increase that so we want to move around that so it's gonna make it move uh, horizontally but it's not gonna loop see the frame here is not gonna be uh, exactly the same as this so what we need to do is no matter what mount we've put here uh, we don't really need to worry about it because here in the seamless loop uh, helper as long as we click on the set end frame here is gonna set the right number and we <laughs> need this number to be high enough for it to make sense so depending on what you're trying to uh, get you might need to increase that number let's decrease it so this is it's not enough we would need more something around that amount would work let's try a little bit less and uh, we might need to increase uh, this to smooth it back and change around that to make it a little bit more complex and let's try it again so that's gonna perfectly loop let's try a smaller value and see I don't need to really know what value it is and if you if it's not high enough you will definitely get some some seem weird uh, results here and there so just be warned about that so I think that as long as we're higher than this you shouldn't get any problems so let's reduce this and uh, let's just make sure that we offset it around the highest uh, frequency value and that uh, we've set the end frame so that's some uh, cool lateral movement that we're able to get 
and whatever we change here afterwards, it'll still work and loop. So there's many uh, different combination that we can test here, depending on uh, the kind of result that we want. So this is something that looks fine for now. I'm gonna keep that, and uh, let's also uh, animate the offset on the Z. So at the same time as it moves laterally, it'll also um, our hills will move up and down. So here, I'm gonna bring it this one at zero and uh, offset Z. I don't know if we need that one to, oh, I or is it the offset Y? Let's change that, set this back to zero. And yeah, I think it's offset Y we want to work with. So let's do that. Let's bring this here and let's just move this around like so and uh, make it loop by clicking on the set end frame. So that's 132, the difference between our beginning and end value. So that's what we have now, and our loop is uh, working entirely fine. So, what can, what can we do with that now? So we have, we still have some gaps here, do we? Oh, we're not, we don't have any gaps anywhere. Um, Let's, uh, let's, 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 perhaps we can make this go faster. So if I multiply that by two, we'll keep the same uh, ratio, but it's gonna go twice as fast. So maybe that's something that's gonna help us. Uh, and it doesn't look like it's really moving down, huh? It's kind of weird. Let's let's uh, let's make sure that this goes really fast. So let's once again multiply that by two, two hundred and eighty-eight. That's fine for us. And let's hit Control Alt Front Slash so we're sure that uh, the cache has been cleared. And now uh, we're getting our lateral movement. We're getting our hills moving up and down, and we're also getting the texture that is going. Uh, up and down across like that and maybe that's something that will look nicer on the other way around so we can inverse <coughs> sorry those keyframes here and uh, now I need to uh, force refresh again and instead of going down they'll go up so if the fractal is moving down and the lines are going up or if they're going in uh, contrary direction maybe that's cool now they're moving too fast so I'm gonna get back here and uh, now it's this keyframe that uh, has uh, 288 let's divide that by two once again make sure that the cache is empty totally and now we're getting something so it's moving up and uh, it's getting distorted and all so that's pretty cool now we're exporting uh, 100 frames. Keep in mind that if we wanted to make it slower and we're not able to do so by uh, having smaller values here. So like maybe if I didn't want it to go that fast. So let's get back in here and make sure that we click on the set and frame here. We have the right value and now it's still correct. So we can test this out. So it still works. But if you would want everything, and let's have it also a little bit less on the, on the Y here. So only 88 here. Let's see what we see what we get out of that. So yeah, that works. But if you, you like this and you would want this to be uh, twice as slow, we can always bring all those to uh, like this is our animation now our offsets here so we can just bring those at uh, frame 200 and and now our frame 199 will be our last frame so this is uh, still looping and it's still 
having the exact properties that we uh, we worked oh but now the texture is uh, is ending so we have to keep everything uh, working so one thing that we can do here is stretch whoops stretch this up by bringing this over here or we could also if uh, we alt click here and uh, get in the properties and uh, loop out cycle this is also valid uh, it'll go a little bit faster but it's gonna do that over the course of hun 100 frames and uh, once it's done it's gonna loop it again and since the math works it's uh, it's gonna be working but let's turn this off and uh, let's simply bring this keyframe on here so we have our motion and it's going uh, a little bit slower so going up and it's stopping because I didn't uh, refresh the cache so let's refresh that and also I'm hitting shift 0 to uh, execute my RAM preview so it's rendering one frame out of two so uh, we can see our result a little bit quicker but uh, keep in mind that uh, that's something that we can change here shift RAM preview option so we're skipping once if I don't hit shift and just zero see it'll fill up the green bar here and not leave any gaps so um, that is going to show us the playback for um, all our frames here so that's pretty smooth that's pretty smooth so we have no lighting on there so that's the basic principle you can stop right here um, and work something uh, with that but if you want to uh, stay with me we're gonna make this look a little bit different a little bit more uh, uh, details so um, first thing that we can do now we're going in the distance from the camera so we have our fog here I know that we have ambient occlusion here that is uh, already filling up the holes here we can uh, make this more evident but maybe it's gonna I don't know it's gonna be a little bit noisy uh, let's turn it off for the moment so we don't have any any uh, ambient occlusion uh, shadows and let's start by uh, generating our own with the fog so we know that the uh, the furthest part away from the camera will be the creases where it's uh, like going in those little valley here so if we reduce this value let's, let's first start by reducing this value here and we're gonna be able to pinpoint where we are so this is as far as we get with uh, our thing here so as we pass the 200 2200 uh, pixel limit we're not generating anything further than that so we can like keep this number around that value if we and uh, that's gonna tell us also that our fog we can bring this closer to the camera and this one also so by doing that we're kind we're kind of bringing in some uh, some shadow detail that looks a little bit better than uh, our ambient occlusion is still off so that's if you can like uh, of course they're all going to be dynamic with that so that's something that works pretty fine for the shadows and from this point you, you can decide if you need to uh, mix this with uh, the ambient occlusion to get something that's uh, even more detail so under the little creases there and then that's going to give you the liberty to uh, have different kind of like really detail your shadow as you want it so now it's kind of the best of both worlds I think so we can keep that I like this pretty neat next uh, what we can do is also light this up with uh, some uh, image based lighting so we're gonna simply use the pre uh, uh, the built environment that we get here with Tao so let's start with the graffiti ruins I like this one very much <laughs> and uh, by default it looks like that because the reflection strength is all the way uh, it's cranked up to 100 we can decrease that and uh, the diffuse the diffuse strength is uh, 100 by default so 
this is kind of the lighting it's kind of our ambient lighting but it's not based on one single color it's based on a spherical map with an environment specific environment on it so um, depending on the amount of reflection you want to get in there you're going to be uh, able to play around with those values here so let's not put that much reflection here and also uh, we can actually leave some reflection and mess around with the Fresnel so the Fresnel uh, will make it sort that stuff that is not point facing the camera will get less uh, reflection and we can also increase the diffuse uh, holdout to, to uh, get back some of the shadow details here on, the, on there and since we using only the uh, SIBL right now if we change that it's not going to make any difference so it's not actually using the diffusion we don't if we don't have this turned on it's using kind of a default light settings we don't have any uh, aside from our towel light but it's not generating any light so we have some kind of a basic light setup that is uh, uh, working here with our scene but if we turn on this built-in uh, bus garage and graffiti room depending on the look you you, you want to get uh, but if you we turn this on then we don't uh, have any controls over the ambient so that's uh, and the specular doesn't it doesn't do anything we don't have our lights so that's something uh, sometimes you're gonna use only the image based lighting sometimes you uh, are going to use mix of both so let's try to do that we're gonna create a new light so control shift alt L and let's let's make this one an ambient light I'm gonna call it M and uh, I'm gonna kind of I don't know if we want to bring in some different shading so let's say we want to make our environment uh, a little bit towards this color here so now we're bringing in, in additionally to our diffusion created by our environment of the bus garage we have this color here phasing in to uh, our stuff but an ambient is set by default to 100 because it would be correct if we didn't use that so 100 for ambient that would be uh, a sufficient amount per se but now that we're boosting our uh, lighting with the diffusion strength here we want to keep the ambient just a touch down but still it's affecting it with the color that we have here so kind of have a little bit more richness if we do that depending on what you're trying to achieve and also we can create a, some uh, light um, let's make a point light and let's call it Tau Lumi and uh, let's make this one blue instead and uh, this one is uh, yeah, a point light and if we go down in uh, the um, material and lighting here not include Tau lights but include Tau Lumi lights since we've called this one Tau Lumi so we're gonna check that and it's gonna create one layer of uh, light uh, more detail so let me uh, bring back the uh, and remember that we're top down so we're moving our light le uh, left to right here and uh, here it's going on the Z for us and the Z is kind of our Y because we're rotated 90 degrees with our camera remember and uh, so if we bring this closer down we can get some uh, lighting detail here and so this let's make it more blue even we can bring some more uh, light color details using that so combination of uh, SIBL and some couple of light elements so let's pull this one down here and those uh, now that we have those now the specular is gonna mean something so depending on if we want to uh, and the diffuse softness and everything so now that we're using actual lights we have uh, more control over that so sometimes what I like to do is bring down the shininess to a very small amount like 4 so it it brings up more of the surface for uh, the specularity 
of our thing depending if you want any specularity at all at all you can turn this down to zero and uh, make sure that you save if you want to turn the shininess to zero because sometimes it makes crash or it makes some result that doesn't make any sense so uh, yeah that's something that's, uh, totally uh, valid to do with our lights here and of course the diffusion there and the light fall off distance uh, this all will uh, so see here my light is up there on the corner here and if I don't have it with a, such a big radius it won't affect down there or it will affect a little bit less so doing that will uh, make it a little bit more uh, more details on the lighting here so this line here and I can, I can duplicate it and bring it another one down there and uh, depending on the result I'm trying to get here but this one I can make it another color so lots of uh, lots of possibilities here messing around and getting some nice uh, look and feel based on our SIBL mixed with uh, some real light elements there on our loop and uh, we might get some little imperfections here and what are those due to they're not the ambient occlusion so that's something there that I'm not exactly sure how to fix so um, I'm not sure that this comes from the light not at all mm. what did we do that did that I'm not entirely sure anymore. I'm not entirely sure anymore of what's happening, what's what's creating those those imperfections here. They weren't there before. Let's try to undo. Hmm. They're, they've been there for a while, eh? not in relation with our fog is it uh, is it in relation to that so yes that has some kind of an influence on it kind of no way uh, none at all I'm kind of not real happy to have those now really exactly sure why 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 they are there so let's try to find different values where it's not that obvious is it from the see that I'm not real sure about what the near value has to do with it but if I increase it like we're gonna lose our the, the tops here but if it's at zero compared to this value per se it's kinda gonna change the aspect of things so I'm not sure of what's causing it is it the texture still have it mm. yeah no, not really really entirely sure of what's uh, creating that there But if you find out, please tell me. It's not the ambient occlusion, is it? I'm not exa exactly sure. Of, but if you find out what what's doing that, please tell me. So changing the amount of sides, maybe. Getting that to render as quads. 
not, not entirely. Is it because we're at zero here? Not sure. Do we need our caps? We don't need our caps. Perhaps by increasing complexity overall, we can lose those uh, imperfections. So uh, I kind of like better the result that I had a little bit before that, but uh, we've messed around with our lights and all. And I don't know that we need actually need to uh, reload the, the environment for every frame because it's an image it's not a video so we can check that off and uh, of course we can also uh, change the scale of the texture here if we feel we need uh, more of uh, smaller of those stripes here we can uh, we can do that and if we had it clamped uh, of course it won't repeat and uh, of course it looks nice also without the texture uh, since everything we've done now is kind of a create this uh, nice fractally stuff here with with a valley here and every uh, it's not really a valley it's kind of a high high top and uh, everything uh, around becomes kind of mountain uh, let's get our texture back and let's make sure that it uh, repeats repeats repeat there 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 so if you want a valley instead of a, a high uh, top here for this kind of uh, landscape uh, I think that it should work if we simply uh, put a negative value on the amplitude uh, of our fractal here so let's uh, do that and if we put minus 82 uh, what we'll get will be more like uh, this uh, kind of valley that we want. It's, it's going to be mountainous on the sides and uh, it's going to be a small little valley in the middle and of course we can it's really fun that we can change uh, all this stuff after we've set up our loop correctly and uh, we can test a lot of different things uh, still keeping our loop point in place without uh, thinking about it and now I'm realizing that my valley I perhaps I wanted to be narrower so let's get back here on to the graph here we have and we can make it simply by bringing those closer there and those in like that I'm gonna refresh we have some kind of a narrow valley here and we can set those back and that's going to change the gra how, how gradual it becomes a valley here and uh, this can even even be oh no it cannot go in the negative so zero is the maximum down 27 so that might be what causes the little black spots also if we decrease it too low I'm getting some of those weird spots around here but uh, let's double click here so we can change without actually going on this frame let's put 12 and let's force refresh still getting those little imperfections but uh, that's yeah that's a totally different uh, set up here and all like the lights is all over the top I know uh, that's just for the sake of this example so let's see what you can do with that and as always thank you very much for watching and see you next time